Hello and welcome to Nick Report, your weekly roundup of all the latest Nick news and all other photographic announcements that we found interesting. Constant here. And this is Becky. Whoop whoop, Nikon announced a new lens. Yay! Yay! So we have the 12 to 28 power zoom lens now officially on its way. This is a new addition to the DX lens lineup that we've been waiting for for a little while. It's been on the roadmap for a good chunk of time. So it's about time that we actually saw something from the roadmap. Yeah, but the interesting thing is actually there weren't many leaks till the last week. That's so right. what it tells us, who knows, maybe with that date, we suddenly will start to see a lot of news coming up and then it will happen. But right now, what we saw that Nikon Netherlands apparently leaked this lens online. Whoopsie. Whoopsie. So they put even the graphics on with a find out more and it would get you to the placeholder for this lens. And also Nikon Germany had a lens placeholder page for that as well. So if you Google it, you would be able to see that. So, I mean... Rookie mistake, if you ask me. So because of that, we also knew all the specifications as well, which helps when you do the announce for this lens. But just to start, it's a variable aperture lens, which is 3.5, 5.6. And obviously at 12, the smallest aperture would be 16. And at 28, it would be 25. It's got 12 elements in 11 groups, one D element, one spherical elements, yada, yada, yada. That's nice. Now, vibration reduction is really useful on the lens. But I think the most exciting thing about this lens is actually the power zoom. Becky, tell us what power zoom is. Power zoom is an electronic zooming in and out, essentially. It's much smoother and slower, usually, and gradual than your mechanical zoom. So you may recall, if you are a long-term Nikon user, the old Nikon 1 system. We had a power zoom 10 to 100 and a power zoom 70 to 300, amongst other things. Yeah, so those lenses have a little switch that you just push on the lens and okay. it would basically mm -hmm. extend itself or retract. Mm -hmm. Exactly like this, wasn't really fast. Now, you do the same thing with a zoom ring on the lens as well, but there's three other ways you can do that as well. There's three additional ways you can zoom in and out with the lens. One is via your function button, so you can set up a function button on your camera to zoom in and out for you. You've also got the SnapBridge app if you're a user of that. And last up, you have the MLL7 Bluetooth remote, which you can program to zoom in and out for you as well. So very much the content creator videographer in mind for this release. Yeah, but you know, you can also control the speed of the zoom. So with the settings in the menus, you will be able to set up to the exact speeds from where to where to go as well. So there's a lot of customizations instead of zooming techniques that you can apply for this lens. For those creatives of you who live on the internet and socials of the world, that would be quite useful, I think. Couple of other things. The lens weighs just 205 grams, so very, very small and light. Judging by the images, it does look like it is a plastic mounted lens, but that that kind of correlates with the price and the size of it, so we're not hugely surprised by that. The lens shift is controlled using voice coil motors, which seems to be fairly common now in some of these Nikon Z lenses, and it is internal focusing as well. It doesn't come with a lens hood or a pouch, but you'll get from the rear caps. Thank God for that. So the price you can see in the United States and UK and the release date in my hand, in my magic hand that shows Ooh. the figures. Bex, tell me. What are your thoughts on this lens? I am yet to be excited by it, but that is only because I haven't seen it yet. I wonder how the power zoom functionality is going to work. I'm hoping it's not going to be the Nikon one system of push a button and zoom in and out. It doesn't have one of those sort of slide your button in and out zoom from mm. what we can see on the images. But I just hope that that zoom ring on it actually turns all the way and it isn't sort of push and hold for zooming and push and hold for zooming out. Do you see no, you're mean? right. Because we, when we actually, when we had the presentation on this lens, I actually asked, you have those other ways to zoom in. Can you actually zoom in on the ring? Because it wasn't clear from the presentation we had. Yeah. Also, what do you think about the whole video side of things? Obviously, it seems like it's aimed for those Z30 users. For sure. It seems like the vloggers cameras are all in vogue right now. And... Sony is releasing the full frame cameras and it seems like maybe Z3 will show up at some point with a similar lens, I think, if this one sells well. But what do you think? Is that the right approach from Nikon to push towards videography? 
Um, I think that that is where the future lies for sure. We are definitely seeing how video is far more prevalent in the media that we consume yeah. in this day and age. So I it does make silently sense. as a photographer when you say those things, but uh, it's fine. I understand. It's those, them's the facts, I'm afraid. But I will say that it's also a great revelation for those who have been waiting for a wide angle lens from Nikon for their DX camera or just actually any DX lens announcement. If you're a DX user, and you've been thinking, well, what about us? We've had all these fancy long lenses over the last sort of 12, 18 months. Now we're finally starting to see some smaller lenses which are geared for the Z50, Z30, ZFC combo. So I think that's definitely a positive sign as it had been on the roadmap. It does mark the end of, apart from one prime, we don't have anything else lined up in the DX lineup. Yeah, so 24 moment. DX prime, that was the one that's on the roadmap for yeah. this year. Yeah, I'd be interested to know what else they decide to throw into yeah. the DX ring. I'll tell you what else. They asked Sigma to release the rest of the lenses for them. And Sigma just released 16, 30, and 56 for DX mounts, which is really good. In my opinion, it's all really good that Nikon is addressing the video market. Mm -hmm. And obviously, I think if it sells well, you'll see the full frame equivalent with the power zoom mechanics. Now, in my opinion, when you release lenses like this, as long as photographer side of things is not compromised, mm -hmm. so in terms of zoom, zoom ring as well, yeah, because it still has to sell to DX photographers, yeah, in my opinion. And Nikon could just release a 10 to 24 lens that they have for F mount, just rebudge that that has traditional zoom ring and release that, but they decided to go slightly different. So we assume that design is also because of that is slightly different in terms of optical design. Yes. So I think as long as the photographer side of things is not compromised, I think it is welcome. It's priced reasonably well. I mean, you know, I would expect for the plastic mount to be a little bit cheaper, but again, I think it's not too expensive as well. So if you are a DX shooter, you will appreciate this focal distances. There you go. All right, let's move on to the rumors territory. So Z8 rumors, they're not going away. No. They're still with us and the date keeps pushing back. So now what the internet tells us that expecting in, in early May, we see the dates floating around from 9th to 12th of May for the official announcement. So let me tell you how Nikon rumors see things happening. Mm -hmm. um, we can start from there. So first of all, they think it comes from internal presentation, which apparently happened already, according to them. Right. Then the next step will be presentation to the dealers, which apparently happened. <laughs> Surprise Pikachu face. Crickets. Um, <laughs> then the start of teaser campaign. And apparently there was a Nikon China teaser came out. Mm -hmm. We had a, something that looked like a number eight, but later became more important. There was an infinity sign. So people thought there was a teaser campaign for Z8 and it actually was a teaser campaign for Nikon Optics and its sign was Infinity. So that didn't happen. Then they expected development announcement. According to them, it will be early May, then official announcement, and then the actual release date. Now, let me tell you why I don't agree with them on this one. <laughs> Nikon Rubens have a lot of a lot of thoughts about this, don't they? Exactly. And here we are sitting on our couch. <laughs> Now, in my opinion, obviously, if you look at Z9 announcement, yeah, so Nikon had a development announcement first on 10th of March, then we had the teaser campaign. So That's true. We, yeah, we had a development announcement for the Z9 before all the trailers started. Yeah, 10th of March was development announcement. In October, early October, we saw a few teasers, mm -hmm. and then on 28th of October was official announcement, and the camera ca came out on Christmas 2021. Yes. Now, if they say the teaser campaign first and then develop an announcement and then the official announcement, I don't think that's going to be a case. So either we're going to start to see teasers straight away and official announcements, so teasers leading to official announcements, then there's no development announcement for that, which we've seen in the past. Mm -hmm. So there was no development announcement of G50. Or the DF, but we saw teasers for the DF, but we didn't have a development announcement. Exactly. Or we see the development announcement first in May and then the teasers and the official announcement, I assume, around autumn time, which is not a great sign if that's the case, because if they tell us it's gonna come out in autumn, again, a lot of people will be upset because they want the camera now. And I mean, this is understandable. And this is the place where, where people complain about things. And it's understandable because we all want a new camera right now in our hands. Not shiny new yeah. things. So in my opinion, we build see development announcements, and then there's no point for the teasers at this point, no? Either that or we'll have what we had with the Z, which was loads of teasers, but no indication of what the product was until it actually came out. And then it was like, oh, it's actually 
a whole new camera system. So I think that it's going to be one or the other. I don't know if it's necessarily going to be both. So coincidentally, coincidentally, Sony also registered two new sensors on their cameras. First one up is IMX366 AJK, which is a beautiful name for the sensor, <laughs> which is a 45 megapixel sensor, or 44.7 megapixel sensor. And the second was IMX455 AQK, which is 61 megapixel sensor. Now, you can see those images with the specifications. What you need to know that 61 megapixel sensor has fairly slow readout. The 45 megapixel sensor has a faster readout, but it's not a Z9 readout. So for those of you that we may think that those potential sensors that m potentially can be used in Z8, 61 megapixel won't give you a K because of the slow readout. No, and 45 megapixel sensor is not going to be as fast as Z9 sensor. So the whole point of having mini Z9 of it not performing as a Z9, does it make sense to you, Becky? I mean, that's with the assumption that these are the sensors that would go into a mini Z9. No, it could be a completely different sensor. It's just that it came out around this at the same time. Well, we, we're just trying to show on things on a small piece of news that we have, really. Yeah, I and mean... And that's the quality of content you can expect from you can report. <laughs> so, Sony do specify that these sensors are for digital stills cameras. Uh, not that's recommended good. for that's use good. for anything other than digital stills cameras. That's good. That's good. That's good analytics, Becky. Yes. It, yeah. is, it is for digital camera. That's a good start. It's excellent. <laughs> so, so Z8 is also a digital camera. <laughs> and therefore, <laughs> digital still camera sensor. Z8 is a digital exactly. stills camera. Uh, match made. It's heaven. done. Okay. I think that the whole point is if the 45 megapixel sensor is not as fast as Z9, this whole point of, of Z8 being me Z9. Mm doesn't work. And then 60 megapixel sensor has a slow readout, which fits of the studio camera, mm -hmm. but it's not fast enough to give you 8K, good 8K output. Mm. Therefore, it won't have a K, which is still entirely possible on Z8, so that it will be a high-res camera with a 4K uh, video sensor. So it's possible that whatever Nikon bring out next does not yeah. employ either of these two sensors. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> That's what I take from that. All right. So. That was that. And then also, also, Nikon Germany has 10 cameras listed on their Z lineup, but only shows nine. Okay, I can, I'm interesting. So do you think it's a hidden camera? Could be a hidden page. Well, well, well. So maybe, like, there's a lot of things happening under hood that we think is connected to Z8, but it may be not. So that's the question. Also, Nikon Asia and other websites, they were down for maintenance, you know. So again, it could be anything. It could be they just updated something. Nikon Image Space was also down for maintenance. So yeah, maybe. Exactly. <laughs> maybe exactly. they're adding stuff to it. So if you're not tired of rumors yet, those are the rumors that you get. With the quantity of times I have stifled a yawn in this last 17 minute segment, <laughs> yeah. I am pretty tired of rumors, yeah. I will be honest. Aren't you tired? Do let us in the comments below because <laughs> no. we probably just retire the show till actual ZA announcement. So we'll see you next year <laughs> for Z6 to Z7 Mark II firmware release. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Uh, I don't know how I'm going to edit all this. As we ask you every week, tell us what you think in the comments below. You may have speculations about this, you may not. Be civil though, because if you look at the 10th of May or 11th of May, so probably 10th of May because it's Wednesday, yeah? So we have one, two, we have about three weeks. Three weeks, yeah. So a couple of bank holidays, thank God for that. So maybe, maybe if we all retire, go take some pictures with our lovely cameras that we already have, and then maybe in three weeks we'll see something. Exactly. Or we'll speculate again. Stay tuned for more speculation. Now, let's talk about lenses because that excites me a little bit more. Yes. Because I like new lenses. lenses exactly. Lenses are great. So the 1228 just came out, which fills that hole on the Z roadmap, which yes. is excellent. And it's a DX. And then if you look at the roadmap that they published in January this year, there's also 24DX lens, which is scheduled there. Yeah. So. The 24DX lens is a bit strange one because we got 24 1.8 full frame lens. Yes. First of all, obviously that could be expensive and also large for DX users. For sure. So it makes sense that 24 is going to be something small and light and fairly inexpensive. Presumably plastic. Yeah, 35 millimeter equivalent. My question only is, do we have 28 2.8, which is also very inexpensive and small. Mm -hmm. So 
for me, it's like it doesn't make sense. Obviously, it's a 42 millimeter focal distance of 35, so 35 is clearly wider. Mm -hmm. But I do feel like maybe we should have gone to maybe something like 22 or 20 mil instead. 21 mil. Exactly. But it can change as well. We've seen Nikon changing the focal distances in the past. Yeah, they've only done it once so far with the macro, the 50 mil macro, which originally was slated as a 60 mil macro. Now, on that future lenses lineup, we did have the 26 mil, which is now in existence. We've mm -hmm. had it. It's shipping worldwide. We have stock of that. And we know what that lens is all about. We will have a review out on it in a few weeks' time. Yeah. Because we have been playing with it. Now, we also have an S-Line 35 millimeter mystery aperture, which we don't know what aperture it's going to be, but we assume it's going to be the 1.2 because we've got now a 51.2 and an 85 1.2. Mm -hmm. So here's hoping. So we've also got the 70 to 180 mil of 2.8, which will be the cheap and cheerful, presumably non-professional but 2.8 aperture zoom yeah i think with this particular lens it's not even if it's when yeah it's that, going to be released that's definitely an imminent release we've got the 85 which was blanked out which we now have the 85 1.2 obviously not shipping all over the world yet but still it's it's kind of out there now the 135 which we still can't even begin to speculate the aperture of because mm -hmm. Presumably, it's going to be quite a chunky lens if it's anything like a, an F2 or 1.4. I doubt it's going to be a 1.4. It'd be colossal. Yeah, I mean, my guess is that we won't probably see it as early. However, the 200 to 600, mm. according to many people, 6.3 is, according to many people, coming soon. Okay, so Nikon Rumors had an update recently and they said that the focal lengths could be different than 200 on the wide end, maybe 180 mil. I don't know who decided that, but okay. Yeah. Uh, they said, not sure why the lens was listed as 200 to 600 on the roadmap. Could there be two different lenses with a similar focal range coming? Okay, entirely possible. Nikon called it a 200 to 600. It wasn't wasn't the the market making it up it was nikon who put it on the roadmap as a 200 to 600. that's true and then obviously we have f mount 200 to 500 lens at 5.6 so that can change nikon had 24 to 105 on the map and we, we ended up with 24 to 120 lens or the 50z macro that is released been lisa there's 60 micro so all those things are entirely possible now, maybe it'd be a 150 to 600. <laughs> it could be 150 to 600 you know to compete with a sigma lens mm -hmm. you never know but also, Nick and Roman thinks that it may have a variable aperture as well. So not like f5.6, like f-mount 200 to 500 lens or 6.3. It could be 5.6 to 6.3. What do you think about that? Um, 5.6 to 6.3 is an odd one. They've never done that before. It's always been 4.5 to 5.6 or 4.5 to 6.3. I guess a lot of it has to do with the size and the cost implications of making it. Because if we don't know the price, they've said internal. No, I said this. Oh, I, you said. My, all those stuff is my comments. Well, I don't, am I supposed to know the difference between your comments it's and Nick Rumors comments? <laughs> It's got this shaped dot exactly. instead of that shaped dot. So Con says Sony have an equivalent 5.6 to 6.3 and is an internal focusing lens at the price of $15.99, which is very inexpensive, but is about the point that the 200 to 500 Nikon was pitched at when it first came out. It was a little bit cheaper, but it was about £1,500. So if it's that's a fixed aperture lens. I think that the Nikon one is going to be a fixed aperture lens. 6.3 though, or 5.6? Just comes down to the size. I think they can make it a 5.6. I think it's possible to make it, it a 5.6. It is possible, but then, you know, like a lot of lenses that they released for Z-mounts were like one third stop down. Yeah. Which was very interesting. And, you know, and even like their primes, 1.8 primes, mm. you can set their equivalent of 1.4 sure. on F-mount and things like this. But we also seen 6.3 lenses at a 5.6. So, so we've got like the 800 6.3. Exactly. Yeah. Which is another big difference to 5.6. It's only one third of a stop and your bokeh is not going to be affected that much. But that's probably to do with the size and weight of the lens just to make it a little bit more portable. Now, 1599, I think the 200 to 500 F-mounts was about 12, 1300 pounds. Mm. But once we had the Z-tax and the inflation, yeah. then yeah, something like 16 to 1800 pounds, I think it's entirely possible. Yes. Keep in mind that the 100 to 400 is a 4.5 to 5.6 lens. Obviously not the same range, but it's still one of their most flexible zoom lenses available. And that one is just, it's 2,300 pounds or thereabouts. So I would hope that the 200 to 600 isn't going to be more expensive, particularly not if it's a 
non S line lens. And not too close as well. And it's, right. yeah, and not too close as it to kind of muddy things. So I would hope that it would be a more clear cut price difference between those two. But if, I mean, we can definitely say that it's been one of those most desired lenses out there. The amount of comments we get on a weekly basis saying that people are waiting for the 200 600 is uncountable now, I think. Indeed. And how to fly to Isekon, which has a questionable track on their rumors. They said that Z200-600 lens is coming soon. Do they say like Z8 is going to be announced tomorrow? <laughs> then well, <it's> not. <laughs> they said that Z8 is going to come out in August 2022. Yeah. But, but the rumors are starting to come in. So fingers crossed, hopefully that thing will happen this year, including the other five lenses. I think it's called manifesting. <laughs> I think that's what it is. <laughs> we should have our own rumor account. Yeah and just throw some random things in. Manifest. ZF being announced Christmas 2023. Exactly. Z9 Mark II coming before Paris Olympics 2024. Yeah. Rangefinder Nikon coming out 2024. And we just have only one date, 1st of April, on all of them. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay. Tell us what you think about the all those rumors that you heard about. You think they're true? You think we're going to wait longer or the announcement is imminent. Now, let's move on to Nikon promotions in the United States as well as United Kingdom and Europe. That's right. So in the US, we have Nikon Capture the Savings promotion, which is all the Z lenses. You get up to $200 immediately off most of the Z lenses. Obviously, not the new releases and the stuff that's hard to come by, but most of the other lenses in the lineup. Then in the UK and Europe, we have trade-in bonuses for the three lower and full frame Z cameras. So we've got the Z5, Z62 and Z72, which essentially means that you can trade in any camera towards one of those cameras and get an extra up to £220, depending on which one of those you're planning to part exchange for. So excellent if you've got some old cameras kicking around in the cupboard and you want to trade them in, or if you've been thinking of upgrading for a long time and you're seeing the value of your existing camera drop, then this kind of sweetens the deal for you and lets you pick up a new Z camera for a little bit less. Imagine you've got a camera like D70 from let's say resale value, its value is very, very low. Five but pounds. Exactly. But then you get this additional money on top of that, which is a good way to get into that system. Indeed. Now, if we move to Japan, Map Cameras publishing their rankings of the best-selling cameras in their store. Wow. And Black ZFC was the best-selling camera in the month of March. Lucky them. Now, the interesting thing about this is... They said that basically ZFC came out quite some time ago, but yeah. the black ZFC in Japan came out on March the 3rd with a caveat. It was available to everyone and not just being Nikon exclusive. And that's the reason why it sold so well in map cameras. In my opinion, and we, we talked about this, I think that black ZFC will be eventually available to all dealers in the United States and United Kingdom. And the Japan example is a good indication of that. Yeah. Interesting that the Z9 is in fourth place and the Z62 is actually in tenth place for them. Z62 still sells well despite the lack of firmware update or autofocus, according to many people on the internet. It just doesn't have autofocus at all. It's just, <laughs> it's just a manual focus it's a manual camera. Focus camera. People are still waiting for this autofocus introduction. So. Shoot, manual focus in black and white on the Z6 II. That's what that can pretend it's a Leica. Exactly. Next up for some awards for you. Nikon won three TPA awards this year at the 2023. In the Technical Image and Press Association Awards for 2023, we had the Best APS-C Vlogger Camera awarded to the Z30. The best super telephoto lens awarded to the Z600 F4 TC VRS lens. Yeah, and uh, the H5 1.2 won the best portrait lens. There you go. All right, now on to some interesting and rare Nikon lenses. Light Auction has another rare Nikon lens for sale. It's a 13mm F5.6 AIS Nikon lens. Produced in 1980, apparently under 300 of those were made. And the selling price is expected to be around 60 to 70,000 euros. Yes. Now we've had at least two of those pass through our doors in the time that you and I have been here. Yeah. And I can tell you that whoever bought them got a bargain in comparison to what it's selling for right now. That's how I got my Ferrari. <laughs> now, this is one of those extraordinary 
wide angle rectilinear lenses. So that means it doesn't produce a fisheye effect. We actually have in an earlier edition of Nikon Owner way back when, an entire shoot that was done on that lens loaned to Felix Kunz. And he photographed the wonderful Pete Reed, who's a gold medalist Olympic rower. So if you are a Nikon Owner subscriber, you can find that back issue there and have a look at the images produced with that lens. In our YouTube archives, there's a video as well. Some conflicting news for you now. So after suspending orders a while back, it seems that Nikon have started resuming orders for the SB5000 flash. They've also resumed orders for the WRR11A or B and WRT10 remote controller sets in the USA. However, we've been given news in the UK and Europe that these are now discontinued. So... So SB5000 is still available, yes. but the remote controller sets are discontinued. Well, at the moment, the SB5000, as far as I know, we haven't had an official discontinuation notice, whilst the WRR11A slash B and T10 set, which is the remote controller set, is now officially discontinued over here. So that uh, is puzzling. Okay, well, the advice is if you need any of those items, maybe especially SB5000, then US dealers still have stocks of it. They just got some in. So maybe it's worth ordering them, even if you are not in the United States, but somewhere else, they ship all over the world. Indeed. Now, into some fun news, the things we don't understand. Nikon launched a Japan first digital imaging microscope, which is called Eclipse UI. Excellent. Okay, so the Eclipse UI has a unique design without an eyepiece lens, even though it is a microscope, a design which improves the pathologist's observation posture and enables the sharing of observation images on the display. So essentially, it's a microscope that doesn't have a viewing display, but does allow you to share and review the images taken with it. The idea is that it is already out and it will help pathologists in the diagnosis, review, study, etc. of various different small things that need to be looked at with a microscope. So fantastic. If you're a pathologist, send us an email. <laughs> we won't read it. Now, next up, Nikon is investing in a smart telescope company called Unistellar. They've announced that they are investing a financial stake in Unistellar SAS, which is a France-based smart telescope company. So actually, Nikon partnered with Unistellar for one of the telescopes back in the day, in 2021. I remember in our early issues of this podcast, we talked about it. So it seems like now they're buying a proper stake, but also they can use that technology, either in their cameras or lenses, or potentially design telescopes that will allow you to mount Nikon Z cameras on them. You know, the kind of the opportunities are quite vast. Yeah. What you can you read from that. But it's an interesting decision. Nikon is investing in other companies, if you know, so they got into 3D printing, mm -hmm. you know, manufacturing semiconductors, and now they invest in telescopes. The plan for the world domination continues. Now, next up for some third-party news, Seven Artisans announced a 15mm f4, which is a full-frame, wide-angle Z-mount lens. This one is priced at $359, and we've actually seen it in the flesh, haven't we? We actually reviewed it, and if you haven't seen this review, we will put the link in the description below. Excellent. TT Artisan have announced an autofocus 27mm f2.8 lens, saying that it is coming for the Z-mount, and it will be the second autofocus TT Artisan lens after their 32mm f2.8. It's interesting because that will compete with 28mm 2.8 Nikon Z lens, in that market, but at price of $149 with autofocus and also designed for DX mount. So for some of you who shoot DX, you will have a good choice. This lens already exists in Fuji X mount and has got pretty good reviews on TTR on the website. So it seems like it's coming to Sony as well as Nikon Z mount and it seems like we'll see it very, very soon. Excellent. Now, coming soon as well, we have Zongi Optics producing a 200mm f4 lens, full frame for Nikon F and Z mount, which is interesting. The details that we have so far is that it is a lens designed with 11 elements and 7 groups and 9 aperture blades. It is not small. It's a 67mm diameter and 186mm long, but it weighs 1.3 kilos. Not light. No. The price is going to be around $600. I really wish it would be a macro lens, you know, because we still have that each for 200 f4 macro from Nikon. So if third party releases one, maybe Nikon will release one soon as well. That's right. You specifically have an itch for the 200 more macro. Everyone knows I love <laughs> photographing flowers. Love it. And um, 
Buy my workshop on macro photography. <laughs> the flora and the fauna by Konstantin Koshkin. <laughs> Excellent. And that's a wrap. Thanks for joining us this week. Thank you very much for watching and or listening. Please give us a like and a subscribe if you're on YouTube. If you're listening on a podcast platform, give us a rating, a follow, a review. We would love it if you'd share us with your friends too. Did you know we're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Amazon Music over the world and also all other podcast platforms? But if you are on Facebook or Reddit groups related to Nikon, you're welcome to share our podcast as well because sharing is caring. It is. And if you would like to see our pictures that we occasionally post online, we're on Instagram. I'm at Rebecca underscore Danese. The shop is at Nikon at Grays. And I'm at Constantine Kochkin. We will see you next week. Bye -bye. Goodbye. Bye.